And the reason why she's losing respect for you is because you actually don't have her best interest in mind. You're so freaking selfish for being a nice guy, for trying to appease her. That you're willing and letting her to go ahead and go against her health just so that you feel happy by yourself. Stop being so freaking selfish. Be a little bit controlling if you need to be. Because if she's going down the wrong direction, of course you have to guide her in the right direction. So I was on the phone with my friend the other day and he literally just let his girlfriend go. He just let his girlfriend go. And he was kind of like hurt because he was like, man, for some reason she just wouldn't respect me. She just wouldn't respect me. It doesn't matter how much you love a girl. The moment she disrespects you, you need to be willing to go ahead and let her go. So as we go ahead and start talking more about this, more about this, we started realizing that the issue, the reason why she was disrespecting him was because of the fact that he learned a lot of these things when he was younger from his parents. And essentially what happened was when he was younger, his mother was leading the relationship. His mother was leading the household. So of course, when your mother is leading the household and she's a powerful woman, guess what you try finding in your future lover? You try turning the next girl that you date into your mother because if your mother's leading the relationship, then you're essentially used to go ahead and push the girl to go ahead and be the leader of the household. Do you understand this? This is a crazy thing. Why his girlfriend disrespected him is his mom was the leader of his household. So of course, in long-term relationship, you will attract a girl and push her to be the leader of the household. If your mom was the leader of your household, you will push every single girl that you've ever dated to be the leader of the household eventually because that is what you've learned. So essentially what happened is where did the disrespect happen? Here's a girl that didn't want to be the leader of the household, but yet he was subconsciously pushing her to be that way because that is what he was used to with his mom. His mom was leading the relationship, the dad was following. So guess what he naturally did? And I started realizing, I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is the exact same thing that happened to me. Why is it that the woman disrespected me in the past? Why is it that woman disrespected me in the past? I was so used to seeing my mom lead the relationship, leading the household when I was younger, that when I got into an intimate long-term relationship, I fell into place with what I was used to, which is pushing the woman to start leading the relationship. And that is where a lot of the disrespect happens because especially if you wanna go ahead and for example, get like a traditional relationship and you go ahead and date a traditional girl. I, I like traditional values, right? So that's just me. And that's what's important to me. But for some reason, every single time I had an amazing girl, she started disrespecting me because I started pushing her into a role that she did not want to be in. And obviously she's gonna get angry. Obviously she's gonna be mad. She's gonna be like, well, aren't you supposed to be a man? And I'm like, yeah, I'm a man, look at me, I'm making money, I can protect you, look, I'm strong. But in the dynamics of the relationship, I was pushing her into the leadership position because that is what I learned when I was younger, right? It was a huge cause of the disrespect. And there's so many different things that end up happening when it goes to that. And again, many of the times it's your fault as a man, right? You just get too soft. So here are some of the reasons why, like just in my personal relationship, why I ended up starting to gain disrespect, which is never really good because for a woman to feel loved, she needs to be safe and secure. For a man to feel loved, he needs to feel respected. And the moment I allowed disrespect to happen, it was, it was just literally just a, a slippery slope downhill for the relationship to eventually implode, right? So the first one is you don't hold yourself accountable. You get too soft around her. You want to sleep in. The lovemaking is too good. You sit at home and watch Netflix all the time, right? <laughs> this is what happened to me. I moved the girl in with me. I was like, this is gonna be great, man. I'm gonna be so productive. I'm gonna make more money. We're gonna make more love every single day. It's gonna be good. I don't have to go out and chase girls anymore, right? I'm a grown up now. I don't have to go out and chase girls at the bars and the clubs. I have this girl, right? But guess what happened every single day when, when you could just go ahead and make love whenever it is that you want and she's cooking food and you're watching Netflix all the time. You lose your masculine edge. You lose your masculine edge. Do you understand like back in the day, what the tribal times do, what the warriors would do. They would go out there into the world with their brothers. They would go ahead and conquer new lands. They would take the riches from the new lands and with their batter scars and their wounds, they would come home and get spiritually healed from their wife and their kids. So there's something innate in us to go ahead and go on an adventure, to go out there with brothers, with fellow warriors, where you're going ahead and conquering new cities and new lands together. And then when you're all battered and beaten up, you go home and get healed. So. Essentially, when we lived separately, that's kind of what it was. I would go ahead and, and, and attack the world via business, via sports, via any aspect of life. And then I would see her on the weekends and I would just be like healed and everything would be good. And I would just go back into normal and I would gain all this energy again to then go out there and attack the world again. But when you move a girl in with you and you don't understand 
like certain aspects and certain dynamics on life, what happens is you're just now getting healed over and over and over and you are resting too much. I was literally resting so much, relaxing so much. I'm like, look at me making passive income. Baby girl, you want to go ahead and watch Netflix? Let's watch Netflix. I'm making money. I'm good. And here I was getting more and more and more lazy, more and more and more lazy, more off my purpose. So subconsciously, guess what the woman starts thinking? My man is literally losing strength. My man isn't going out there to battle anymore. My man isn't going out there and conquering new lands. That means I'm not safe. That means I'm not secure. And understand this, remember, for a woman to feel love, she needs to feel safe and secure. For a man to feel love, he needs to be respected. You are now threatening her safety and security by becoming weak. So she has no other option but to start disrespecting you. She has no other option, man. And you understand when I went from like traveling around the world, speaking on stages, and now I'm watching Sex in the City with my girlfriend every single day, watching Netflix, there's something in her subconscious mind that's like, what happened to my man? My man now is just doing what my girlfriends do with me. Now we're just watching Sex in the City. Why was I doing? Oh, because it's comfortable. You know, it feels good and nice and warm to be around feminine energy, but not too long. Because if I'm around feminine energy for too much, I will literally lose my masculine edge. And a lot of people don't understand that, especially when they go ahead and move in with, for example, a girl or they move the girl in, is life just gets too easy. Life just gets too good. Life just gets too like relaxing. And you start slipping and slipping and slipping into feminine frame. You start slipping and slipping and slipping into a feminine frame where you lose your masculine edge to go out there and conquer something, right? And that's exactly what happened to me. And obviously, that's, that's initially what started a lot of the disrespect in the beginning. Another thing is you don't hold herself accountable. If you are focusing on the best version of yourself, she should also be coming the best version of herself. So this really kind of stems to values, right? Many of the times relationships don't work is, uh, surprisingly, you don't have the same values. Right? It doesn't matter how beautiful she is, how nice of a butt she has, the, how nice her boobs are. It doesn't matter. The relationship will not work based off of how nice her butt is. The relationship will not work based off of how big of her boobs are. If you don't have, to have the same values, it's not going to work long term. It's not going to work long term. So before I even held her accountable to that, I started realizing earlier on that our values just didn't align. I wanted one things out of life. She wanted one things. We have different time horizons in life. She wanted kids in a certain amount of time. I wanted kids in a certain amount of time. So obviously, if that time isn't the exact same, someone's going to be freaking mad. Someone's going to be freaking angry, right? So initially, what would have prevented all of this was just understanding the values of the relationships and our time horizon for the relationship a lot earlier on. A lot earlier on. I didn't understand that. Why? Because she was just so beautiful. (laughs) She was just so beautiful. I couldn't see. I couldn't see. The, the cliff that we were about to fall off just because of how beautiful she was. I just was like, I just couldn't, I couldn't think. I couldn't think logically, right? And, and all of this pain would have just stopped and the respect would actually have been there if I understood that actually we just didn't have the same values long-term wise. So staying together long-term wise just doesn't make sense. And the longer we stay together, the more our values start clashing, the more pain we start feeling. So that's one aspect. If you're in a relationship where the values just doesn't match, maybe it's not best to stay in that relationship because what's going to happen is she's going to be either unhappy or you're going to be unhappy. And then you're just stuck together for the rest of your life. Constantly feeling anxiety, starting to feel sadness, depression, regret, all of these things because you never understood what was important to you. Now on the other aspect of things, this is what you do when you actually do find a girl that is in your values. Like for example, for me, my values are very traditional. Right? My values are very traditional. I like very like the conservative, conservative traditional values, right? Where I learned just in, in when I was younger, like literally being raised as a Filipino Asian guy, like traditional values of seeing where the men were go, gonna go ahead and be the provider and the women are gonna go ahead and, for example, nurture and protect the home, right? So that was like it, right? And every now and then, if I'm like dating a girl and she starts showing signs that aren't traditional values, even though I know she came from a traditional background, like for example, I, I tend to prefer Eastern European girls just because they have very traditional backgrounds. I'm generally even like getting fluent in Russian just because I could go ahead and speak to women that can't speak English because I understand that the more they speak English, the more woke, if you will, they start becoming, the more just feminist they start becoming. And I'll go ahead and have to go ahead and call her out because every now and then I understand that she comes from a traditional background. She has traditional values at its core. I have traditional values, but every single time she says stuff that I know she's just kind of regurgitating, repeating that she heard on social media, that wasn't hers. That wasn't what she was taught from her parents. 
That's just something that she heard while she was in college or maybe when she was hanging out with friends from maybe her feminist friends. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I will literally go ahead and call her out if she's going against her values as well, right? And if you're focusing on becoming the best version of herself, again, she should be focusing on the best version of herself. So I focus on my personal development. So obviously I like dating girls that also focus on their development. Like you know a relationship is, is good, is when because of the relationship, she is becoming the best version of herself and you are becoming the best version of yourself. Where I've seen that is in traditional values. In traditional values, that's where I've seen the most happiest couples, right? So obviously when she's going against her values and she's going off of alignment and not focusing on becoming the best version of herself, I have to be able to call her out. I have to be able to call her out. Again, the problem in my past was I wasn't used to that in a healthy manner because I would see mom and dad always fighting all the time. So they had no idea how to communicate. But because now I understand my values and I understand her values and we understand that we're like literally having similar values for the long term. When the person that you're with is in line with their values, you have to call them out same way with how you would call yourself out. Again, the people that you date is almost like an extension of you, meaning you would want what's best for them, same way how you want what's best for you. And if they're doing something that's actively going against their values, you should probably call them out. One of the biggest values that I have is health. Same thing with her, right? So if I'm dating a girl that also has a value of health and she starts spending time with girls that are just constantly vaping and drinking, I'm probably gonna tell her, yo, Health is important to me. You told me health is important to you and now you're freaking vaping. Now you're freaking drinking. Why? It's dumb, it's stupid. You're better than that. Why are you going in and doing this? Why are you going in and listening to those friends that aren't really that good? Where do you think those girls are going? The girls that are just vaping and smoking and drinking all the time. What do you think they're gonna end up? What type of mother do you think they're gonna be like, right? What do you think their future daughters are gonna learn from this behavior? Essentially, always kind of letting her know this. You have to hold her accountable, same way how you go ahead and hold you accountable at all. And the moment you go ahead and do that, that's where the respect actually happens because she knows you're actually leading. But if you just let her do whatever it is that she wants because that's what her friends are doing, right? Of course she's not gonna respect you. Of course she's not gonna go and respect you because you don't even care about her enough to go ahead and tell her what her behaviors are doing that's actually not good for her long term, right? Like why are you gonna go ahead and let a smoking addiction or a drinking addiction happen right in front of your eyes with someone that you really care about. Oh, well she's beautiful and she should do what she wants and I don't want to be controlling. Do you see where her friends are going? Do you see like the future mother that her friends are gonna be like? Do you want that in your future mother of your child? You have to start thinking like this, right? You have to start thinking like this. And the reason why she's losing respect for you is because you actually don't have her best interest in mind. You're so freaking, freaking selfish for being a nice guy, for trying to appease her, that you're willing and letting her to go ahead and go against her health just so that you feel happy about yourself. Stop being so freaking selfish. Be a little bit controlling if you need to be. Because if she's going down the wrong direction, of course you have to guide her in the right direction. Especially if you want to be in a traditional relationship as a man. The third one is you aren't in traditional values. Again, give me one relationship where a woman deeply respects a man and they're not in traditional values. They're not in traditional values. Because if you really think about it, the main hormones that kind of run our entire life, we could get spiritual, we could get all that stuff, we, we could go, you know, what's modern now or what's in the past. But the thing that leads men the most is like testosterone, the thing that leads women the most is estrogen. And everything that we do that goes against those emotions and those hormones are literally going against what we are programmed for, right? What we are programmed for. So obviously you see some woman that's making more than her man, the man's at home, right, with the kids, deep down to a biological level, the, the woman doesn't respect the man. The woman doesn't respect the man. Like, like find me one relationship where the woman makes a lot of money, more money than the man, and the man is staying at home with the kids, and the woman generally respects that man. I've, I've been looking around, man. I've been looking around. I haven't seen that relationship. The happiest people that I know are ones that are in very traditional relationships where literally the woman's ultimate goal that would cause her the most amount of happiness is when she is on her deathbed to not see the diplomas on the wall, but to see all of the grandkids that are looking up at her babushka being like, wow, what an amazing, beautiful woman that taught me so much lessons when I was younger. Just really think about that. Like no one understands this, right? It's like, Let's begin with the end in mind. On our deathbed, what would we be the most excited about and most proud about? As a man, as a man, oh my God, look at this 
a beautiful family that I created and all of the things that I did to create this amazing reality for them, right? Or a woman, right? What do you think a woman is gonna think on her deathbed? Oh, look at all these diplomas that I got and work for all these corporations that never really cared about me and I made them so much money, oh, but look, I have no kids to send me off. Or, wow, look at all of this huge family that I've created where they learned so much lessons from me where I raised such beautiful children and I taught them how to be kind and caring and nurturing and loving and giving and I taught them all the things that were important about me as well as like my husband at the time, right? Just imagine, right? And if that's so important that we really need to start working as a team to actually get us there because the thing that creates the most happiness are generally traditional values. I didn't like it at the time because in the time I wanted to go ahead and fit in and all my friends were like saying this woke behavior so I was like, I want to be this woke person too. But if I really look deep into the core, you could see the results of people's belief systems and ask yourself, do you want those belief systems? I've looked at so many people's belief systems on things that were the opposite of traditional values and they did not have the results that I wanted. They didn't have a healthy body. They didn't have good, amazing, loyal friends. They didn't have you know, an adventure through time and space. Many of the times, a lot of them were just in a lot of pain. So why am I just gonna go ahead and adopt their values and their belief systems just because it's popular and it's trending right now? It just does not make any sense. It's stupid, it's idiotic. Another thing is, if her mother didn't respect her father, she learned that behavior from her mom and is now bringing it into your relationship. So understand this, if the woman that you are dating, if her mother did not respect your, like understand this, I'm gonna go ahead and say this again because this is freaking powerful. If her mother did not respect her father, then of course she will not respect you in the relationship. If her mother did not respect her father, then what she learned when she was younger is to not respect the man that she would be in a long-term relationship with. This is why it's like very important when I'm even on the first date, I, like, I sit her and I was like, oh yeah, cool, how was your day, cool. Which love did you crave for the most, your mother or your father? I get straight deep into the mother and father issues, the mommy and daddy issues as fast as possible. Because you already know kind of like her belief systems, her values, her mental models, typically on what her relationship was like with her parents. If a woman's relationship with her mother and her mother's relationship with her father is constantly disrespect, of course she's not gonna respect you. Because her mental model of love is, if I love a man, I'm gonna go ahead and disrespect him. Why, because mom and dad loved me so much that they made me. So if they made me, it meant they loved each other. And if they loved each other, and this is how they're treating each other, mom disrespecting dad, then in order for me to love my mom, or in order for me to love my man, I need to disrespect him. Do you understand that? It, it doesn't logically make sense, but this is what we were taught when we were younger. This is what we were taught when we were younger. When I was younger, I was like, okay, mom and dad love me so much to the point where they made me, but mom disrespects dad. So it's normal for a woman to disrespect me because that shows that she loves me. It doesn't make sense logically when you say it out loud, but when you emotionally embody it, you're like, ah, oh, this feels right, this feels familiar. It's not healthy, but it feels familiar, right? And <laughs> that's, that's the biggest sign. If you're in a relationship where she does not understand that and you don't help her become aware of that, then of course she's gonna disrespect you. Here's an example, right? I was dating this girl, right? And every now and then, she would do things that would just disrespect me. And in the past, what would happen is I would let that slide. Why? Because she's so beautiful and I'm afraid of losing her. So let me just allow the disrespect to happen because right now, the love making feels so good, right? I started asking, I was like, okay, well, what's your relationship with your mom and dad? What's your relationship with your mom and dad? What's your relationship with your mom and dad? What's your relationship like, what's their relationship like with each other? And apparently, the mom was constantly disrespecting the dad. The mom was constantly disrespecting the dad. She was angry at her mom for constantly disrespecting her dad. And I'm like, oh, so you're angry at your mom, right? Yeah, why? Because my dad works so hard and he's doing all of these things and he's providing and mom's not respecting him the way that I want her to respect him. So I'm always angry at my mom. I'm like, cool. So how come in our relationship, when I do this and you're disrespecting me, isn't that the exact same behavior as your mom? And she's like, yeah, you're right. Like really, really think about it. Same with how you're understanding this with yourself and your mom and dad. You have to do this with your, your, your lovers too. Like what's their relationship like with their mom and dad? You have to go ahead and show them the light that there are certain behaviors that they're bringing into your relationship that is what they learned from the trauma from their parents. And when I started doing that, everything just started becoming better. Now, when you go ahead and date women, obviously it's good to just make sure that that didn't happen because it just makes life so much easier. But odds are there weren't many strong fathers 
previously. So obviously you're gonna deal with a lot of women that didn't have strong fathers, where the, the woman was essentially leading, and because of that, the woman subconsciously disrespected her father. So subconsciously, she now she is gonna to wanna to go ahead and disrespect men in the long-term period in her life. If that is the case, which is completely normal, you have to be able to show her that by asking her certain questions because you did it with yourself. Again, this is what's normal for me, right? It's like mom disrespected dad, so it was normal for me to go ahead and be the man in the relationship where the woman disrespects me long-term wise, and I should be okay with that because happy wife, happy life. And in the woman's aspect of things, she constantly is now angry at her mom for being disrespectful for her dad, but yet she realizes she's being disrespectful for me and she's angry at her mom. So since she, she understands that she's being a hypocrite because now she's becoming her mom. And I'm like, baby, do you wanna become like your mom? You are so angry at your mom. Your mom has caused so much pain for you. Yet here you are showing the exact same behaviors as your mom. Is this the decision that you wanna make? And again, it's her decision. It's like if she wants to make that decision and constantly disrespect you, then she's not to the point where her values align with you, where you want to focus on developing yourself to become the best version of yourself. If that's the case, the relationship won't work. But if you're really with a good girl that is in the values of personal development, she'll be like, you know what? I am repeating the exact same mistakes as mom and dad. This is why it's so important. If you are really dating someone and you're constantly being disrespected, Understand the relationship with your parents. Have them understand the relationship with their parents. And you also, like a psychologist, need to understand the relationship with her parents as well so that you can also guide her out of those negative behaviors that she's bringing into your relationship. Same with how you're bringing negative behaviors into your relationship. Another thing, your father appeased your mother and then you learn that behavior from your father, right? <laughs> so this is what I learned. Mom would almost go mostly crazy once a month. Why? Because she was a woman, she had her period, right? Dad had no idea how to handle those emotions. So what he did was he appeased her over and over and over and over and over again. So guess what I learned when I was younger? When the woman in your life goes emotionally crazy, argues, cries, you appease her. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's what I learned. That's what I learned when I was younger. So obviously, <laughs> when I was older and I started attracting women in my life, and it was always great in the beginning, but what was long-term wise, I started falling into the trap with what was familiar, when the woman would want to argue and, and, and scream and, and yell and do all these things for some type of conflict or argument, guess what I did? I appeased her. And again, when I learned that that's what a, the, that was the behavior that I adopted from my parents, I asked myself, well, do I want to become like my father? I want to take the good things from him that I learned, but do I also want to take the negative things from the relationship as well, right? And there were certain things that I realized that I was adopting certain mental models and belief systems that was causing the relationship to be very, very tough when I was younger, seeing them fight all the time about money. But if I truly wanted that, then why am I adopting the same mental models and belief systems, right? I knew I needed to go ahead and create something different because again, you are cursed to become like your father if you're a man, and the woman that you're dating is cursed to become like her mother and your mother if she doesn't understand this, right? The next thing that you need to understand is you allow lack of gratitude and disrespect to happen for fear of missing out. What do I mean by this? The moment a man feels any type of disrespect or any type of lack of gratitude for the work that he does is the moment that he stops respecting himself and stops actually feeling like the love in the relationship. Again, I say this over and over and over again. For a woman to feel love, she needs to feel safe and secure. For a man to feel love, he needs to feel respected. And how a man feels respected is the woman is grateful for the things that he does for her, right? That's all men wants. Dude, men are willing to go ahead and, for example, die for a woman, go to war for their lover just to make sure that their kids and their wife respects them. That's it. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. But the reason why the disrespect is happening is because you allowed it to happen in the first place, right? Where there was one point of disrespect that happened that you didn't call her out on. And this is why dating a girl for, with like very big traditional values is huge because it's literally in their culture. It's literally in their culture. Like for example, in the Islamic faith, right? In the Islamic faith, uh, in one of the, the books, I think it was the Quran or something like that, they would talk about hell and they would talk about visiting hell and they would talk about seeing the souls and the dwellers that dwelled in hell and what the souls were that dwelled in the hell that were burning in hell were souls filled with women that were ungrateful. So imagine dating a woman where that was like instilled in her mind earlier on, right? Or in other parts where in other like orthodoxy or whatever religions, you have like, for example, Lilith, right? Lilith was Adam's first wife who instead of being made from his rib, he was made, she was made from the same dust. And essentially what happened with Lilith is she became the first feminist and because of that, she turned into a demon. She became ungrateful 
She became vindicative. She did not have any respect for the men. She literally became a demon. So in some women that you date that come from religious backgrounds, there's this fear in her mind where if I become ungrateful, if I don't respect my man, I will literally become a demon. I will literally become a demon. <laughs> and isn't that not too far off? Like if you really truly see a relationship where a woman doesn't respect the man and the man allows disrespect to occur and the woman constantly gets more and more angry because the man's not leading, she eventually turns into a demon. She starts going crazy. She's like, wow. She's like making all these noises and arguing and yelling. She essentially turns into a demon because of the fact that you allowed the disrespect to happen. And when a woman doesn't respect you, of course she's going to be angry because now she doesn't feel safe and secure that you could actually protect and provide for her. So at the end of the day, as a man, it is all your fault. It is all your fault. The reason why she's becoming like a demon is because she doesn't feel safe and secure. So this is the only way she could communicate to you to step up, to get out of the house, to go out and make more money, to go out there and provide and protect for her more. You need to understand this, right? This is, again, why you need to understand that a lot of the lack of gratitude and disrespect happens. So if you're not dating a religious girl or she didn't come from a religious background, you have to call her out. You have to call her out. What I do is I literally now tell any girl that I'm dating, oh, look what I read when I was checking out, you know, this faith or that religion. This is why, like, if you literally look at the countries that are the most religious, they're just kept really, really well. Really, really, really well. And when, when people started losing religion, the world just started getting messed up. Why? Because religion put certain mental models and frameworks and dynamics in people that maybe was actually good for them. That maybe was actually good for them, right? Another one is you stop spending time with your fun friends because your girl doesn't want you hanging out with them. You value your relationship with your wife or your girlfriend more than you, your relationship with your brothers. <laughs> Why does this happen every single time? Every single time I would always be really, really cool. Then I would get in a relationship. Then the relationship would feel so good that I would say goodbye to all of my cool, fun friends. All my cool, fun friends. I was doing cool things. I was doing stuff. Why? Because my girl was like, no, I don't want you out with them. I want you home with me. Of course, happy wife, happy life, my mind. Let me appease, my, well, let me appease the girl that I'm with. Right, And what happens when you do that is you lose who you are and you start becoming what your girl thinks she wants you to become. But the moment your woman changes you, she ends up leaving for someone better. Look at any type of relationship where the girl tries changing the man, tries changing the man. It's fun for them. I could change him. I could change him. The moment the woman changes you, she is bored and she will leave you for somebody else. She will leave you for someone else. So what if? What if the reason why she got with you is because you were that fun person in the beginning? Do you understand? The reason why women get angry with you is when you go ahead and meet someone for the first time, the first two weeks will dictate the reality that she expects from you for the rest of her life, right? So the first two weeks, my mom met my dad. He was a baller. He was making money. He was getting steak dinners every single time. Then he lost a bunch of money, got married, and the life that she was used to in those first two weeks was no longer the case. He had to go in and get a job. All the things that she was used to in that first two weeks was no longer congruent to what she signed up for. And same with how you go ahead and order something at a restaurant and the waiter comes and gives you something and you're like, I didn't order this. A woman thinks the exact same thing. Whoever you are in the first two weeks, if you cannot make that sustainable for the rest of your life, there is gonna be a point where she's angry. Cause she's like, wait, this is, was, wasn't what I ordered. I ordered one thing and I got something else. I ordered this Chad, now I got this like beta male guy, right? It's because you weren't, you weren't consistent with who you were. And one of the biggest things that makes you that person is, is your friends, your social circle. You value your relationship with her more than the relationship with people that actually hold you accountable, that are logical with you. So now what I've realized is actually having a good brotherhood, having people to hold me accountable, having people to tell me when I'm not on my purpose is strong because what happens is when you spend time with what feels good, it gets harder later on. What happened to me is I got deeper and deeper in a feminine frame, deeper and deeper in a feminine frame. It was harder for me to go out and relate because no one else had similar pain points as me. I'm dating the, the most beautiful girl in the island at this time, right? And here I am, like not having any relatable experience. I needed to understand that I need to spend time around people that could call me out when I'm being weak, when I'm call, that could call me out when I'm getting in a feminine frame. And I need to like literally spend a lot of time around these people. I can't get rid of them even if I'm in a relationship, right? Even if I'm in a relationship. Right? So that is also another important thing. Another one is you can't protect and provide for her like how she knows another man can. And she knows it. And she is angry that she settled for you. So the reason why 
A woman is angry at you and disrespects you is she knows that you're her second option. She knows that you weren't the first option. She knows that there's some other guy that could protect and provide for her more than your ass can, but she settled for you. She settled for you and that's why she disrespects you because you aren't the man that she wanted. You aren't the man that she wanted. And that should infuriate you. That should infuriate you that the fact that you are her second option, what does that show? You need to become better. You need to become better. You can't blame her. You can't yell at her. You can't argue with her. You need to look at yourself in the mirror and you gotta ask yourself, will I be this woman's second option or will I want to become the best version of myself where this woman is proud to be with me? Because what other option does she have out there? Do you understand that there's not that much competition at the top because most men don't wanna work on themselves? Right, you need to become the better option, right? Another thing is you allow her to change you from who you were from before the relationship. When it comes to a relationship, there's two people that have two different realities. The person that you're bringing into your reality, she needs to want to be more in your reality than you do hers. So what I do, when I like let go of the other relationship because we just weren't good together because our values didn't align, she wanted to focus on one thing, I wanted to focus on another thing, I spend most of my time not chasing women. I literally gave up women for a long period of time, maybe like six months to eight months, right? Six to eight months, I just focus on building the most epic reality for myself. So that way, when I would meet a girl, guess what? Whose reality would she want to be in? Mine or hers, mine or hers, mine or hers, probably mine. Who else, where else could she get that reality from? It's very hard, probably from my friends. My friends wouldn't talk to her if I'm already talking to her, right? Because that's just the way that we're set up with, with our kind of like brotherly rules. If she's gonna be in my relationship and she's gonna be in my life, she's gonna be in my reality. Now what would make her disrespect me the most is the moment we get together and I throw away my fun reality for the reality that I want with her. She didn't sign up for that. She's used to the reality that you created. So why are you gonna let go of that? If she's telling me, oh, you know, I don't like those friends, I don't like all the things. This is what you wanted when you first met with me, right? Oh, no, I'm feeling jealous. Oh, well, that girl's looking at your social media. This is why you initially fell for me in the first place. Because I'm that man and now you wanna go ahead and change me? Understand this, women will do their best to try to change you. But they don't want you to change. It's almost like a test. They're gonna do their best to change you. But if they could go ahead and change you, they've essentially domesticated you, and now they don't want you. They're not interested, they want somebody else. They wanna work on another project. You will need to focus on you and your reality because that's what's best for her. If you focus on your reality, you build a bigger network, you make more money, you go ahead and become more lethal. She's gonna be more excited. Oh, well you're around girls all the time. Baby, this is just business, right? Oh, well you have to go out and travel. You're there with me, right? You're coming with me, you're helping me with all these things. Like, <laughs> you, you can't change from who you were from the first two weeks of the relationship. So whatever it is, the first two weeks that you see a girl, you have to maintain that essentially until you die, right? And obviously what helped me create this reality that allowed me to become more attractive to these women to actually go out and respect me was time, money, and location freedom. So if you need help with that, then sign up for the links below. If you wanna go ahead and start an e-commerce business, check out the third link. If you wanna join my personal branding mastermind where we're gonna go help you launch your business, right? Book a call with me and my team to see if you qualify. If you wanna go ahead and just create passive income with artificial intelligence, check out the first link in the link below.